Olivia Pia. I'm going to Philippians 4. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> This is the New King James Version. The Word of God says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. It doesn't stop there. It says, and the peace of God. Mm. How many of you need some peace today? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It surpasses everything. Uh -huh. Our intimate thoughts, uh -huh. our 
Jesus for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication. See, supplication is also prayer. But it's personal. Uh huh. It's personal. It's your allowing him to know personally about you. Uh huh. He said to be anxious for nothing. No great move of God took place without prayer. Come on. Yeah, right. Nothing. Right, right, right. Absolutely nothing. So what are we talking about? When we talk about prayer, what are we talking about? We're talking about adoration. We're talking about confession. We're talking about thanksgiving. And we're talking about supplication. We heard all of them today. They were all going forth today. These are the healthy characteristics of prayer. Now, do we always follow that? No. No. Sometimes we just got to get a word in. Is it always necessary to follow that? No. Especially when you have relationship. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Well, see, when you have relationship, you can just go in and ask for some things and get it. You bypass adoration. You bypass confession. You bypass thanksgiving. You just went in and supplicated. Come on now. And your prayers were answered. But my question becomes, what happens when there is no relationship? Jesus. And you going in and you supplicate. What happens when there is no relationship? Just think about it in the natural. Husbands and wives, there is no relationship. Parents and children. See, when we have relationship, people just come in and ask for what they need. And it's granted. Yeah. But what happens when there is no relationship? And you come in and you ask him from a place where you have no right. Jesus. Uh, come on. Come on. When, as I heard you say, we neglect our prayer time. We neglect studying, reading, meditating on his word. We neglect the relationship. Jesus. Oh, you ain't gonna like it. But I ain't scared. That's too bad. That's too bad. Come on. See, there is an order. There is an order to pray. There is an order to commune with God. God likes to be loved on too. Why do we have so many problems adoring God? Yes, 
We don't want to confess. Yes. Jesus. God already knows it. Yes. Who do you think you're fooling? Yes. Yourself. Yes. Yes. Not God. No. Come on now. Holy oh, you. Come on. oh, we don't want to confess. Come on. Come on. We act like David. That's right. We murder ourselves. Yeah. We murder ourselves. Yeah. We don't want to acknowledge Jesus. that which we have done wrong. We want to pretend and act like it's just going to go away. Well, it's not. There's power in God. Come on, God. Yes, God. And the enemy don't want you to know that, so he wants you to keep it to yourself and act like it's a big secret. God already knows. Now, you might be fooling me and some of the other people. Not only are we praying 
for ourselves, we are also interceding for others. Yeah. We are entering the session for others. He said to enter the session. Enter the session. When we enter the session, we are entering with a confidence. Yes. Amen. Yes. We're not entering wavering. We're not entering weak or uh, where the intercessors are. See? Come on. See, it's the prayer that's offered in faith yes. that will make the sick person well. That's right. We can, there's a session already going on. We just enter it. We just enter in. Amen? Amen. He said, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So again, I ask you, what happens when we put in our prayers, when we put in our supplications, our personal petitions, and we've not worshipped, and we've not confessed? Well, well, what happens when we do that? There's no peace. There's no intimacy. There is no trust. Oh, my God. Mm. You ain't trusting God and he ain't trusting you. In the natural, when you're in a relationship and there is no intimacy, you don't trust that person. So if you've not put in the intimacy, the communing with God, we always want it to be lopsided. We want God to give, 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 give. And we don't want to give anything. Amen. We just want to be. Well, what is really supposed to happen? Well, see in verse 7, it says here that the peace of God. Peace. See, if, if we do these things, if we're not anxious, but if we're taking everything to God in prayer and supplication with the thanksgiving, then what's going to happen? His peace. You know, the peace that passes all understanding. His peace. It is going to guard. It is going to protect. It's going to guard and it's going to protect not only our hearts, but it's going to protect our minds. So if we're not doing those things, what's happening? Because the mind is a battleground. Yeah. And it needs to be protected. We need the peace of God. My God, my God. When we call on God from hearts that are not in him, when we call on God from a place of not being in right relationship, when we call on him and we ourselves are not right, what happens? What happens? See, the key to answer prayer is remaining in Him. Amen. Oh, oh, it's the word. Because yeah. mm -hmm. when we remain in Him, our prayers and everything line up. Come on, talk to me. Mm. My God, when we call on God and our hearts are not in God, then we remain in that old person. We're, we're regenerated. Am I, am I talking to saints of the Most High God? We are regenerated people. We have an old man and a new man. Are we remaining in that old man and not experiencing the full peace of God? Let me, let me take you to the word. He says in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. See, he didn't told you don't be anxious. Come on to me with everything, not some things, everything, with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Tell me what you need. When you do these things in the way that I'm telling you, then my peace is going to guard your heart and your mind. And then here's what I want you to think on. Here's what I want you to meditate on. Here's what I want you to ponder. Here's what I want you to turn over and over and over and over again in your mind. He says, think on these things. Yes. Whatever things 
things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, whatever things are virtuous, whatever things are praiseworthy, he said, think on these things. So my question becomes, what you thinking on? Come on. What you meditating on? Yes. What are you pondering? What are you turning over and over and over in your mind? Yes. Because the regenerated man, he's telling us what to think on. Yes. Sir. See, now that we are in Christ, we are to put off the old man. Oh, you can't identify your old man. The one that's stuck in sin. The one that's stuck in sexual immorality. Come on. The one that's stuck in lust. The one that's stuck in greed. The one that's stuck in evil desires. Yes. The one that's stuck in anger. The one that's stuck in rage. Oh, I got to your street yet? The one that's stuck in slander. The one that's stuck in filthy language. Old man, new man. Old man says, I'm a victim. New man says, I'm a victory. Old man says, I'm proud, for I have all of that in this song. New man says, humility. I can do all things through Christ. My God, which one is operating in you? Come on, come on now. Which one? The old man or the new man? The old man says revenge. The new man says revenge is the Lord. Forgiveness and um, the new man trying to get us over to forgiveness and we got to get there. Look at what the word says in Ephesians 4. I'm going to verse 26. He says, be angry and do not sin. He says, do not let the sun go down on your wrath, yeah. nor give place to the devil. Mm. That implies that when you let the sun go down, on your wrath, you are giving place to the devil. You are giving him a foothold. It further says, let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. How many words coming out of our mouth that isn't good? Well, well. Mm -hmm. How many things are we saying out of our mouth that we don't think nothing about? Come on. Look what it says in verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Yeah. Here it is. Let all bitterness. Yes. Come on, Prophet Pete. Oh, yes. Wrath. Mm -hmm. Anger, yes. clamor, yes. and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. He says to be kind to one another, tender hearted, yes. forgiving one another, 
even yeah. as God in Christ forgave you. Yeah. You said that's nothing. I heard that all before. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> Why is that significant? Hmm. Because many of our own problems, we bring them on ourselves. Yeah. Because when we hold on to all of those things yeah. so that he has know. said to us to let go, then we have opened up a door. Yeah. What door did you open? You opened up that stronghold. Yeah. You opened up the door for the stronghold, for the enemy to come in, for him to hurt you, for him to torment you. You opened it up because you refused, refused to let it go. You think that it's okay. You wonder why you have having suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Sometimes we open up the door ourselves. Yep. The woman of God says, you got to know that which came, is it from God or is it from the enemy? Mm -hmm. Some things is from you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because you're holding on. Yes. Right. Because you're bitter. Yes. Come on. Because you're angry. Come on. Because of your secret sin. Yes. That's right. Yeah. You're holding on to it. I'm going to let you think about that. Yes. Because I need to give you an opportunity to let it go. Yes. Because you're going to open up a door. You're going to open up some doors in some instances, and you don't even realize that that's what you've done. Yeah. Right there. Sometimes we blame the devil, mm -hmm. but it was really us. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Because God has already told us what to do, and we have refused to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, obedience is as witchcraft. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Do we really believe it? Or are we just saying things out of our mouth? Are we, can we be honest with ourselves? Or do we need to keep on pretending? This is God's word, it's not mine. Don't harden your heart. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he is making it very plain today what it is that you need to do. Amen. He's making it very plain today what it is you need to do. He said to be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then he says, think on these things, that which is pure, that which is noble, that which is kind, that which is lovely, that which is of a good report. He is giving us directions and instructions. Yeah. Paul went on to say that he had learned to be a base and or bound. Yes. How many of us can say we've done that? Yes. He concludes by saying, he can do all things through Christ. That's how he concluded this. That he can do all things through Christ. We can't do anything through Christ if we don't have him in us. If we're not studying and meditating on his word. If we don't close some of those doors that we ourselves have opened up. I hope you're thinking. I hope you're thinking. Let me show you one last thing. Then I'm going to make two calls. I'm going to run over to Matthew. I'm going to show you this. This is it. 
Matthew 18 is where I'm going. I'm going to start in verse 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him saying, Master, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Look at this. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and threw him into the prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw that what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him. Who did he deliver him to? The tormentors. The torturers. Until he should pay all that was due to him. Verse 35. So my heavenly father also, this is the word, it's not Pastor Thrasher. So my heavenly Father also will do to you if each of you from his heart, all right, does not forgive his brothers his trespasses. See, when we don't fully accept the grace of forgiveness, we hold unforgiveness towards others. When we hold that, then God turns us over. You just read it to the tormentors. God does that. If you are here today, here's the first call. The first call says this. If you're here today and you drop dead right now and you don't know where you're going, if you have not confessed Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you're here today and maybe you have confessed, but you've backslidden. You've been out of the way. Maybe you've been coming to the church, but you've still been out of the way. Out of the ark of safety. Out of God's safety. Then this first call is for you. It's an invitation to accept Jesus. It's an invitation to make him the head of your life. If you're here today, this is the call to hook up with Jesus. That's the first call. If you're here today and that fits you, I ask you to stand on your feet and accept Jesus.